This is the Power Break Podcast number 101, titled Trusting God or Playing Yo-Yo. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobBrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Big Bad Bob, how are you, buddy? Well, not Big Bad Bob so much, but how's old old JT holding up during all this coronavirus stuff and all the threats against uh, police officers? Are you holding up? Man, I've been praying for you. Well, we need all the prayer we can get, honestly. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Law enforcement mentally is not in a good place. And, you know, whether you like us, dislike us, just understand, you know, we're the large majority of us are just there to try to be servants. Right. That's it. And, you know, those are the ones that are going to turn around, you know, like that have the wives that are saying, you need to get out of this because nobody's supporting you. Mm. So all I would say really to the whole thing is bad things happen when good people say nothing. There you go. So that's the word for the day. Don't just let it stand. Don't just stand by and let uh, negative things go on. Uh, Support your the the law enforcement that does a good job and uh, let people know that you're praying for them. Yep. Yep. We love it. And you know, something uh, to people's credit, a lot of people will just pull up next to you um, when, you know, you're sitting there doing paperwork or whatever and just say, Hey, just to let you know, I've been praying for you guys and I really appreciate what you do. And, yeah. you know, I've been, I've been seeing a lot of that too. So I know there's a lot of good people, but you know, you, right now those good people are scared to speak up. And that's really sad to see because at some point or another, you'll turn around and you won't like what has happened in this yeah. nation, you know, um, because we didn't speak up for what was right or what we thought was right. You know, good word there, JT. Good word. Well, speaking of speaking up, we appreciate those of you that do that on behalf of the Power Break podcast to give us your ratings and review and uh, also help to spread the word on social media and word of mouth. Thank you very much for speaking up on our behalf. And as JT mentioned, it's a good to speak up on behalf of your local law enforcement and let them know that you appreciate them. So with that said, JT, how good are you at yo-yo? <laughs> you know, I, I remember very distinctly when I was a kid watching somebody who was really good at yo-yo thinking, ah, oh, that can't be that hard. They make it look like, you know, big nothing, you know, and doing all these crazy tricks and, um, yeah, no, uh, I could average maybe about three up and downs before it went off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, buddy? Ever I, good at yo-yo? Yeah, I did. I was never any good. I, uh, you know, I, I was never one to put the time into it. I, I saw those guys do those things and then, you know, the, you'd see the commercials that made it look so easy. Just order your yo-yo today and That's you can right. do all these tricks, la-di-da. And you order the yo-yo, and it sits in your closet for the next. <laughs> I was going to say, I you know, if I didn't, it, it may still be in my closet. I have no idea <laughs> where that is. I know my kids had the same experience with yo-yos. They're like, oh, that looks really cool. Oh, this is really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And by the time I put that much effort into it, was it really worth it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, how about it? How about uh, yo-yo with God? How are you at that? Yeah, I you know you one of your sermons um, you know, kind of talked touched on that over the I was just listening to some of your stuff on sermon audio which I do all the time and I would recommend anybody do um, and you were just kind of talking about um, you know taking control and letting the sin nature run it and then trying to turn back to God and then taking control let the sin run. <laughs> it's like, that's what we do naturally, right? Yeah. We want to run to the sin nature. We want to run to our fallen self instead of just having that automatic reaction of go to God, stay there. You're right. And the crazy part is, is usually when you stop staying there is when things start going really good. <laughs> Have you noticed that? That's right. That's like right. I'm, I'll be like, man, I'm in the zone. Everything's going good. My relationship with God is good. Like, just really awesome. Uh, uh, You know something, man, I'll I'll get some time with God later. And I start to cut down on my devotional life and I start to do that. It's like, man, it's so broken. Take it back. And here it is. Oh, take it back. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? 
Well, that's that's exactly what we do, all do. We all face that problem. And, I, of course, uh, you know, the burden, as uh, the Apostle Paul said, uh, every, as he declared, I was, I'm not, not in any league with him, but in Second Corinthians, he described all the things going on in his life and, and being uh, at sea for several days and everything else and, and going through all the beatings and everything else. And then added on that, he says, the care of the church. Yeah. Okay. And I, th- I think that is uh, where, you know, as a minister of the gospel, you have other things going on in life. And then besides that, the care of the church. And right. so you give it to God and you say, okay, it's, it's going. And then next thing you know, that you find yourself filled with worry and doubt again. Well, one of the dumbest things we do is play yo-yo with God, where we take our burdens to him in prayer or get up and take them right back on our shoulders. Or we take time to give God all of our lives and dedication and service. And then if we don't watch out, we'll just take it right back again. That's called yo-yo in my mind. Uh, uh, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all of your cares on him or all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. That's a one-sided yo-yo. Yeah. Put it there. Yeah. Don't take it back. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me a lot of, uh, I, I think it was James that said, you know, somebody who looks in the mirror and, and oh, yeah. looks intently at themselves and then turns around and walks away and forgets what they look like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog, uh, Trusting God or Playing Yo-Yo. Such good stuff, Bob. I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for just you reminding me always that the word is where I need to go. It's oh, just really shame. awesome stuff. Um, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, folks, you are missing out on a lot of great resources. The books are awesome. You've heard us talk about that. Um, but you can also sign up for Bob's blog, which will show up every Monday and get you going, going in the week in the right direction, which is so good. But let's talk more about trusting God or playing yo-yo because I think – all of us with especially how never ending the negativity seems oh, to be yeah. right now. Right. It's hard not to get into the yo-yo, you know, it, and it may go moment by moment. It's, you know, God, I, I, I just need to turn all this over to you. And then within a couple of minutes, you know, the heck with that. I got to, you know, just <laughs> it, it just seems like that's yeah. where we're all headed. We're all so angry right or, now. Or either that or you, you, you spend time with God. And the next thing you know, you talk to your neighbor and they're filled with negativity. They just watch the news or you, you come across people that have no uh, desire toward God. No, nothing. God is not in their life. Yep. And so everything's negative anyway. So. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So here's what I wrote. I said, have you ever lost sleep over a situation because you were just filled with worry? Uh, most of the things that we worry about will never happen. We can't change the past and worrying about the future only causes us to miss the present. So why do we worry? It's an attempt to control the uncontrollable. But more than the fact that we worry, the, the, the less we're able to even control what is controllable. So Worry is a lose-lose situation. This is why Jesus said it wasn't worth it to worry because God has everything under control. You need not to worry. As he says in Matthew chapter 6, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious or worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you drink or, or about your body, what you put on. Is not your life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor they gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? And which of you that being anxious can add a single hour to the span of life? What are you anxious about? Clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. He tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, uh, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? <laughs> o you of little faith. So the next time you begin to worry... Step outside and take a lesson from the birds and the flowers. Yep. Okay. So trusting trusting God to handle the situation, leaving it up to him because he's sovereignly in control, is what Peter had in reference when he said, Humble yourselves, therefore, into the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Notice a couple of things in this passage. First of all, we're called to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Whenever we try to carry our own problems through worrying, we're actually acting in pride because we're saying that we can control the uncontrollable. 
Right. Wrong. <laughs> That's a great, that is a great way to look at it, too, because yeah. most of us don't attach those two things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, we should look at the situation over which we're worrying as a signal to humble ourselves before God by calling upon him. And secondly, he says, casting all your, of your anxiety. Not just some. Not just some. <laughs> <laughs> and third, we fall back on his promise that he cares for us. So let's think about that passage, casting all of your anxiety on him. Fishermen who uh, have a casting line or a casting net will tell you the key to casting is knowing when to, to let off, right? Yes. Yeah. you're throwing... That's it. I mean, uh, your son Christian is pretty good at this, isn't he? That boy can fish. He is a good fisherman, yeah. and he is a great caster. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, the the point is, we cast our concerns to God. We need to let it go, mm-hmm. not pull it back. There you go. Uh, and so that's what the, the, the analogy is, yeah, that sometimes we play yo-yo because we give it to him, and then we take it back. We give it to him, and we take it back. Yep. You know, it's like one old preacher said one time when he asked some lady how she was doing, and she said, well, okay, under the circumstances. And he said, what are you doing under there? <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome one. I really like that one. Here's old preachers that I know. Anyway, instead of pulling back the worry, <laughs> just cast it on him. We should really be bringing back the promise of his care and his love in our minds, the way of meditation in his word to fill our hearts where the worry had taken up residence before we cast it on him. Anyway, the, the, the article is God, uh, Trusting God or Playing Yo-Yo, and I encourage you to check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. Awesome, man. What else is happening? I, 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 and actually, I've been looking forward to this a lot. So, What else is us, happening? Tell us what's new, man. Well, uh, what do you want to talk about what's new? is We have this special offer that my man JT has come up with for the book, The Battle for the Mind. And last week, as we were uh, closing down the recording, uh, JT had this wonderful idea. So we kind of massaged it a little bit. And so here's how the special offer goes, JT. No, go ahead. You, no, okay, go, go, so go ahead. No, the you special were, offer you, is... You're, you're the smart guy. Okay. You know I mean? <laughs> the, the book we have, The Battle for the Mind, we are willing to send you a copy. JT is putting up the, the dough. I'm putting up the cash, people. The, putting up the cash. All right. So here's the deal. If you want a free copy of The Battle for the Mind, you send us a question that, for us to answer on the... The Power Break Podcast and send your question for the spiritual, the mental, or the physical aspects of life. Any one of those areas, any question, we'll take it. Send it to JT at BobBrewBaker.com. And if we pick your question, okay, then we will send you a book. And that means that when you send a question, they need to send their address. They do, or I won't be able to send you a book. Yes. That's right. Logic would dictate that, that that's the way that's going to work. Yeah. Physical address. That's so, right. That's right. Da, 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 this is a great opportunity, folks, to get a free book called The Battle for the Mind and to help you through this uh, COVID-19 situation, as we've mentioned before. And JT has the special off- uh, JT, you something else, man. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I do know this. <laughs> This book changed my life in a very positive way. So I can't wait for other people to have that same experience because it's really that good. It's okay. really that good of a so book. So keep in mind, folks, the, the, to write to us at jt at bobbrewbaker.com. Send your question. Send your address. And if we pick your question and read it on the air, then you will get a free copy of The Battle for the Mind. Amen. That's it. That's the offer, people. That's the offer, man. And we're sticking to it. <laughs> yep. That's a bit, That's the offer, and we're sticking to it. Yes, we are sticking to it. All right. So now that we got the special offer out, and like I said, I've been looking forward to this all week, uh, let's turn to what about this. That's time for questions and answers on the podcast. If you have a question for us and we use it, you if know you, what's going to happen. If you included your address. Yeah, you got to include your address or I can't send it to you. But um, send that to JT at BobBrewBaker.com and we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break podcast. So are you ready for question number one? Yes, sir. All right. Did you write this blog as a follow-up to the discussion on fear? I would say it, it came across that way. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that too. As yeah. as I was reading it, I'm like, oh man, he's he's so good. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just uh, you know, 
as a minister of the gospel, you have a train of thought and it just kind of, and you think about what you've written or what you've preached and you, and it goes in series. Yeah. No, it was, it, it, it's good. And it's so perfect because, you know, a lot of times what I'll try to do is if I have a thought, I'll try to jam it all into one spot. And the, one of the things that I've learned from you was be thorough with every part. Just break it up into different pieces. Yeah, massage is, it. Yep. That's it. Massage it. So, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So explain again the yo-yo concept and then what we can do when we find ourselves doing that. Because I think all of us need to retrain ourselves. Yeah. I think that your expression is often to hit the reset button. And the reset button here is to recognize, you know, I've just prayed about something and I've just unloaded my burden to the Lord. And then I get off my knees or get out of my prayer chair, chair wherever I've been praying. And then I take it back and I begin to worry again. And there's yep. something about That's that it. that we feel because there's effort put forth in worry that we're doing something. We're, as one old preacher said, worry is like sitting on the, on the, on the uh, porch on a rocking chair. And the harder you rock, you're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, man, that is so true. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what we do then, we need to fill our minds with important things. It says in Philippians chapter 4, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right. So we're anxious. We're worried. So he says, pray about everything. Yep. But pray about everything with prayer and supplication. That means you supplication is you, you're really praying hard about it. Right. Okay. But he said, do that with thanksgiving. Okay. And what you get in return is peace. Okay. Would that be a good, good exchange? You pray, you get peace. Sounds like a pretty good exchange, doesn't it? It really does. Okay. Yeah. Sounds so like a win-win in every direction. You cast your care and what you have in return is peace, peace of God. So then he says this, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Yeah. The effort is what you think about is very important. Yes. What you put in is important. So as you cast your worry upon God, focus on his care and an attitude of gratitude, both for what he has done in the past and what he promises in the form of peace and what he is going to do about the situation which has caused you to worry. In, ex in exchange, you will enjoy peace in the place of anxiety. This is casting your care upon him instead of playing yo-yo with him. Yeah, and it's so important for us to uh, literally rewire our mind with that. You know, oh. when you look at research on the way the mind works, it's actually fascinating. And one of the things that you, we, you and I can easily do because God built us this way is we can rewire ourselves the way we think mm -hmm. naturally develop a different pathway of automatic thinking but we have to make the dedication to do that we have to put the effort into it we have to do what paul says which is train ourselves mm -hmm. to think that way it's right? interesting you bring that up because I was listening to a podcast of a guy that's a brain specialist. Okay. Oh, man, that must have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. and what he was saying was, if you want to make a change, develop triggers, okay, so that when, you're, when you think a certain way that, that you convince yourself that is a trigger. Okay, ah, so there you go. in this case, when you find yourself worrying, that's a trigger to pray, Yep. okay, and express gratitude. It's awesome. So That's exactly the more it. you think yeah. about that, and he said, you know, um, the problem is we don't plan. Yeah. Okay. And then, so we don't have a plan to work, but if we make a plan, then we work that plan. The plan is we write down, said, so when I'm worrying, when I catch myself worrying, I will pray and I will express gratitude and I will fill my mind with good things. So if we just wrote those things down and then when you find yourself worrying, you hit that button. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. called JT's reset button. That is the reset button, man. And it's <laughs> and it's absolutely something that we are called to do. You know, this is a training thing. This yeah. is training exercises. Paul talks about it all the time. And God built us to react to training. He that's really right. did. Yeah. Um, so, man, you know, 
let's turn to question number two from the mental aspect. I, I think the two are so directly related oh, to exactly, each other. Exactly. Um, but what do we focus on, um, or what can we focus on to avoid that yo-yo syndrome? And I think we already talked about it a little bit, but l- let's go further into that. Well, two things I would say to, to the, you know, the, the for a person to focus on. Number one, God's promises. Right. God's promises. I mean, they're everywhere in the Bible. There's hundreds of promises. And if you just focused on one promise a day, that would do, do you well. Peter calls them in Second Peter chapter 1, the exceedingly great and precious promises. <laughs> you yeah. know, Paul says in Second Corinthians chapter 1 that all the promises of God are yes and they're amen in Christ. So there's God's promises. So we just focus on God's promises. It's interesting, uh, you know, I'm going through the book of Psalms in the summer here, a summer series in Psalms. And one of the things David does, I think it's in Psalm 54, David in the midst of it um, gives a little affirmation of faith to himself. You know, like yes. it's like talking to himself. Yes. <laughs> yes. This Which is, is what I believe. OK, yeah. well, basically it's OK. When you re- rehearse God's promises, this is what I believe. This is the basis of my faith because God has promised it. Yeah. Okay. The second thing is look at God's provision in the past. What has he done in the past? Okay. Take those two things, just those two things will captivate your mind. If you just allow it to just think about it. how has God provided for you in the past? Okay. If you had one promise of God, I know I'm putting you on the spot. That's okay. One promise of God that, that you go to, a fallback promise of God, what, which one is it? Well, the fallback one is that he'll always be with me. Okay. That's, a, that's something that's really important to me. But, you know, it's so funny. When I look around, one of the promises he says is at some point he will turn people over to their corrupt minds. You know, that's, yeah, yeah, that's in the book of Romans chapter 1. Right. Yeah. Are we not living through that? Well, that's an – this is, a, yeah, the, the full uh, spectrum we see in, of Romans chapter 1 played out today. Yeah. But it's interesting because – uh, Christians in past centuries felt it was playing out in their day, too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So, I'm sure. But the bottom line is is that when you're surrounded by people who don't fear God or love God or turn to God for answers and rely on his word for what's right and wrong, mm-hmm. we end up in the same place all the time. This is actually what's going on around us is it actually comforts me to a certain extent because this is his promise. Well, this is, yeah, so there's an evidence that the Bible's true. Yes, exactly. Yeah, makes you so, turn you know, there, towards there's it There's his more. promise, and of course, you think about provisions in the past, you know, he's taken care of you in the past. Yep. yep. I mean, he's seen you through, and he's answered prayers in the past. And I think those two things, if, from a mental standpoint, if you just look at God's promises, take a fresh view of God's promises, and then take a fresh view of his provision in the past, and you say, well, I, I haven't ever received anything. But yeah, you have. Did you wake up this morning? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Lamentations chapter 3 says his mercies are new every morning. I mean, you, you were not destroyed. You were not sent to hell through the night, right? You, you find yourself waking up here. So that's, Pretty cool. That, I mean, that's God's mercy right there. And and everything that you have is God's mercy. The very fact that you have breath in your lungs. You know, yep. Everything. Yep. So uh, anyway, those two things. God's promises, God's provision. Well, you know, and, and I think you touched on something that's really important, that our tendency to take things for granted. You yeah. Know, um, and, and that's something that, you know, if you take everything for granted, then really you, you're never going to be able to see what faith can do. That's exactly. Just well, that's, the way that... Sometimes people will get like that because you know, they, they get so down on what is, is not happening in their life. Yep. Right. And so then they fail to see what God is doing, and as a result... It, they, they just go down the the negativity trap. Yep. It's just a spiral down. Yep, for sure. All right. We are going to turn to the physical aspect, which is always exciting. Yeah, because we're right. physical guys. Uh, That's right. Uh, eat more meat. <laughs> uh, anyway. Work um, out more. <laughs> uh, more like Neanderthals than anything else. Anyway, is there a standard of eating during a workout? You should always eat a steak along the way while you're running a <laughs> marathon. <laughs> Actually, I came across Chris Carmichael on this. Now, he's, he's the guy that is, runs this training program for endurance athletes. And he said, 60 minutes or less, you just hydrate and avoid carbs in your hydration. That's it. Okay. Yep. 
if you're working out one to three hours, you focus on your hydration, but you have a small amount of carbs depending on the intensity. Right. Okay. Three to six hours, you hydrate with carbs and maybe a little bit of protein. Six hours plus, all the above and lots of it. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Without making yourself full. And that's, you know, we were talking a little bit about pre-planning, right? Uh, Especially when it came to how your thought processes and stuff like this. But when you're working out and you know that you're going to be going a distance, you need to start from the moment you, you, you start, right? Yeah. As far as that's concerned. Like if you're running... If you're running a marathon, you don't wait until the second hour to start doing what it says here, right? Um, So you should start with the protein and you should start with all those things if you're going that kind of distance, right? It's not one of those where for the first hour you don't need it. You only need hydration, and then the second hour you need this and this. Oh, and yeah, the third hour. yeah. It's not that. It's not progressive. You, gotta, you have to have yeah. a plan, and, and you have to make a plan and work your plan. Yep, yep, so that's right. As a, the old uh, guy who was the – he wasn't really an old guy. He was the, he was the uh, physician. He was in charge of the medical uh, the medical tent and uh, oversee things at the Ironman in Hawaii in the World yep. Championship. And he always gave a speech on the – two days before the race, they have a – a meeting of all the athletes and they go over the, everything that's going on in the race. And he said, if you don't have a plan to eat and drink, you won't. And he said, you will visit me before the race is over. And he says, if you visit me before the race is over, that means your race is over. <laughs> that is correct. Yep. Yeah. You see a doctor when you're out on an endurance course. That's not good. That's not good. That's, not, that's good. not good. But you know, I made a mistake last Saturday because it was raining here. And so my, my pre Long ride day. Saturday's my long ride. Yep. So my pre-long ride schedule is all messed up. And so we moved our start time from 7 o'clock in the morning till, till noon. Oh, wow. Well, in the meantime, Jan got up and says, hey, how about breakfast? And so she fixed bacon and oh. eggs. <laughs> Which sounded good, but when I started to ride at noon, I said... Slug-ish. Yeah. yeah. No and way. So actually, I cut it short because I just said, I just don't have it today, guys. Well, yeah. you didn't have it because you had too much blood doing other things. Yeah. That's, what, that's what was so, going on. There's a lesson. So there you go. It takes discipline not to overfill yourself with carbs and other things. <laughs> but, but the bacon and eggs was good, wasn't it? Hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, I discipline my body. And keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. As we always say, that discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. So check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 101. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobBrewBaker.com. And don't forget to add your address. So if we pick it, you get a book. That's right. And we just mentioned thing. one more time before we go, because we are offering the battle for the mind for anyone who writes to JT at BobRubaker.com. Send us your email. Send us a question, either on the spiritual side or the mental side or the physical side of life. And any question from anywhere, it doesn't have to, because you won't know what we're going to do on the podcast coming up. That's true. Maybe yeah. one that's in the past or whatever. You want to send us a question. And we have the offer is The Battle for the Mind, a book that I wrote to deal with the mental aspect and how it affects the spiritual. And Anyway, your walk with God. Check it out, BobBrewBaker.com. The book is there. And, of course, JT has this special offer going on. How How about that? How about that? How about that, folks? (laughs) Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. Check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other really cool things at BobBrewBaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.